This is Debt Free in 30, where every week we take 30 minutes and talk to industry experts about debt, money, and personal finance. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. My guest today has a very interesting story. He created quite a media sensation because he bought a house in Toronto, worked hard, kept his expenses low, and paid off his mortgage in just three years and two months at the age of 30. Some people heard his story and said, that's great. He worked hard, lived frugally, and paid off his mortgage. He's an inspiration. If he can do it, anyone can. But other people had the opposite reaction. They said he was crazy because the way he did it was by working three jobs and living very frugally, and that's not realistic for many people. He's single, so he didn't have to worry about spending time with his family, so he could work 100 hours a week. He biked to work, brown bagged it for lunch, and didn't splurge on nights out or vacation. So what's the real story? Is it a worthy goal to work 100 hours a week to get out of debt fast, or is that not realistic for most people? Also, how did he do it? So let's get to the story with my guest. Who are you and what do you do? My name's Sean Cooper. I work as a senior pension analyst at a pension consulting firm as my full-time job. On top of that, I also work as a personal finance writer, and I'm a personal finance expert. Excellent. So let's get into the story of your house then. So you bought a house, I believe, in Toronto. When did you buy the house? I purchased my house in August 2012. And I believe this has already been reported in the media, so I don't think I'm asking you questions that haven't already been out there. But how much did you pay for the house? I purchased my house for $425,000, $425,000, which is definitely a reasonable price for Toronto. Yeah, because every house is a million bucks or something in, in most cases. So, And so that was in 2012, you said. And how much of a down payment did you have when you bought the house? I had a down payment of $170,000. So the mortgage was... Um, 255000 255000 Very good. You're much better at quick math than I am then. So... How did you uh, how did you manage to save up for the down payment? Well, I pretty much uh, started saving my down payment when I was still in university. I didn't actually have any student debt. Um, I know a lot of students are graduating with thousands of dollars of debt, but I worked three jobs while I was in university, and I also worked during the summertime um, and did a couple internships where they were paid. So I was pretty much able to pay for my whole year's worth of tuition just from working during the summertime and any of the extra money that I earned. Um, I pretty much started saving towards um, a down payment of my house. So when I graduated, not only was I debt free, I actually had a decent amount of money saved towards a down payment of a house. And how long was it after you graduated that you bought the house? We're talking two, three years kind of thing? Yes, I graduated in, in April 2009. So I bought my house in August 2012. So it was over three years because when I graduated, of course, it was like during the financial crisis. So I actually wasn't able to get a decent job right away. Um, I ended up working full time at a supermarket for almost uh, a year and then I finally landed a decent job um, at the pension consulting firm. So um, it it definitely wasn't easy right off the bat, but I've pretty much uh, stuck with that job for over five years now. And so you didn't get the down payment because your parents are rich and they gave you $200,000 then? No, um, it's funny. In some of the stories, uh, there's been some misinformation reported, like it said that I earned something like $75,000 a year for my full-time job, which isn't correct as well as it said that like my parents uh, gifted me the down payment and uh, that's uh, totally incorrect as well. Um, while my parents did help me by allowing me to live at home, I did pay them rent. So um, it wasn't a free ride by any means. I came up with the down payment myself. So how long then did it take you to pay off the mortgage? It took me over a little, uh, a little over three years to pay off the mortgage. So about three years and two months to be exact. So, um, I managed to pay off the mortgage at the end of September, 2016. Sorry, I ended up paying off the mortgage at the end of September, 2015, 2015. And that's when you had the big mortgage burning party. And that was certainly something that was, was covered in the media. And I'll put links in the show notes to some of the stories that have appeared. Of course, I'll also put links to your blog and everything so people can track you down. So I guess the real question then is 
how did you do it? You're talking $255,000 in a mortgage that you paid off in just over three years. That sounds unbelievable to uh, to most people because you're you're looking at what you know 50 60 70 eighty thousand dollars a year that you're throwing on a mortgage that's that's more than a lot of people make um, and you just said that you're not working at a job where you're making you know even seventy five thousand which has been reported in the media so how did you do it what how did you manage to generate that kind of income to pay off the mortgage that quickly well, it's not rocket science or anything. I mean, um, I'm not related to Donald Trump, uh, and uh, you know, I don't have a trust account the size of Paris Hilton. But you know, um, it definitely uh, it was two main ways. It was by boosting my income as well as cutting my expenses. So on the boosting the income side, um, I worked my full time job at a pension consulting firm, so I de- earned a decent amount of money from that. Not seventy five thousand, but um, I earned like. Uh, 55,000 around that. And, um, and then I worked on top of that as a personal finance writer. And I also worked um, until a year ago. Uh, I, I kept my first job at a supermarket. So I earned extra money from that. So the combination of the three um, and also was a landlord on top of that. So I was earning like over $100,000 a year um, from all those income sources. So um, with all that money, I was able to make lump sum payments on my mortgage and I actually maximized the prepayment privileges. Um, my mortgage was with a secondary lender, First National, so uh, I was able, they had generous prepayment pri- pri- uh, privileges and I was able to max all those out every, every single year. Like I doubled up my payment, I increased my payment by 15%, I, I believe, and um, I also made lump sum payments uh, totaling 15% a year. So. I took advantage of all of those, and on the expenses side, I lived uh, as frugally as possible. So, for people uh, besides their mortgage and rent, their two most costly expenses are transportation as well as uh, groceries or food. So, I was able to cut down those expenses um, drastically. Um, first of all, I, I don't own a car because I'm live near the subway station, and um, when the weather is not so nice, I'll take the subway. But during the summertime um, and nicer weather. I'll cycle into work. Um, so I was able to cut my transportation costs uh, a lot by doing that. Also, in terms of groceries, I'm a vegetarian, so I save a lot of money from doing that. And I also shop at discount grocery stores like No Frills and Freshco and Price Match. And basically, I try to only buy stuff on sale. So um, I saved a, a boatload of money from doing that. So I want to come back to the expenses, but let's just touch on the whole prepayment privileges thing that you said. So in a standard mortgage, I'm you know making a payment every month or every two weeks, however I've got it set up. Um, most mortgages have some kind of prepayment terms in it. The mortgage that you had, the way you're describing it, allowed you to make extra payments up to a certain amount per year. Is that how it worked? Yes, I was able to make lump sum payments like totaling 15%, I believe. So whenever I had freelance income come in, like from my writing work, like when I would get a check in the mail, I'd basically make a lump sum payment then and there against my mortgage. So um, I was able to, because that mortgage, that money went directly towards principal. So I was able to, you know, shave years off my amortization. I believe my amortization originally was 30 years. So I managed to get that that down to three years and two months. Wow. So I guess as a planning point for people, make sure you understand what prepayment privileges you have in your mortgage. And if you've got the extra cash, then that's that's something good to do. So back to the expenses then, because as you said, there are two ways to generate extra cash, increase your income or reduce your expenses. So increasing your income, you said you worked three jobs, you had your main job, you had uh, your your job on the side, a side hustle, I guess you could call it, as a personal finance writer. And then up until a year ago, you were also working at a supermarket, which I assume was in a relatively lowly paid job. You weren't the president of the, the supermarket, I'm guessing. So you were working, like how many hours a week were you putting in at your peak? I was putting in, on average, I'd say 80 hours a week, but I did put in like 100 hours a week the odd time that seems like a lot of hours to people, but um, like I was working on some uh, 
tax writing projects and um, I was able to make something like $13,000 in freelance income one month. So, you know, I put in the extra hours because I was able to make a lot of money, but um, I didn't work 100 hours a week every week. I don't think I'd be living if I did that. Yeah, that would that would probably kill you. But 80 hours a week, I mean, that's two full time jobs. So so then on the expenses side, um, you kind of sketched out how you did it. You don't own a car, so you're able to either, you know, walk, take you know, ride your bike, take public transit um, and then keeping your food costs as low as possible. So the house that you live in, which you own, you're living in the basement and renting out the top. Is that what you're doing? Correct. I actually got that idea from Scott McGillivray from HGTV's Income Property. Uh, my father was a big fan of his show, and I like a few years ago, five years ago, I've never watched it before, so I figured I'd just tune in because he said it was a great show. So I watched it, and I heard Scott McGillivray tell a story about on his uh, first Income Property. He lived in the basement, I believe it was for nine years, um, and uh, to basically help with his cash flow like his friends were asking him you know why are you living in the basement uh, you could be living in such a nicer place and he was like it's all about cash flow so that's that was my idea as well so he's definitely my inspiration for doing this and the reason being you can rent out the top floor for more than you can rent out the basement exactly i mean when i looked at it from, from a logical standpoint um, i could rent out the basement for about $800 a month and live upstairs, or I could live in the basement and rent with the upstairs for double that amount, 1600 And being one person um, and also not being home very often, it didn't make sense to have a whole like three be three bedroom house to my own, myself. I just wouldn't have the furnishing to, uh, to fill it with. And, um, and like, it just didn't make sense. So that the choice seemed obvious to me with, especially with the sky high, housing prices in Toronto to live in the basement and rent out the upstairs. I had been living in the basement pretty much all my life, so it wasn't really much of an adjustment for me. So now let's get to the key question, and this is kind of what's been in the media. So you've got some people who say, this is fantastic. Here's a guy who's lived really frugally, worked really hard. He deserves all the rewards he gets. But then you've got the alternate viewpoint that is, this guy is nuts. He was working 80 to 100 hours a week. He was, I mean, all through university, all through working, you know, just kept working, working, working. Um, you know, he doesn't own a car. He's living in the basement, hasn't gone on a fancy vacation. You know, you got to you gotta enjoy life sometimes. So what's your response to that? Are you crazy, I guess is my question. It depends on how you define crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, in all seriousness, I basically saw it as short-term pain. Um I basically saw it as um, short-term pain for long-term gain. Um, a quote that I find very inspirational is from Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, and uh, he's also on Shark Tank. He says that you should, um, I'll just paraphrase it, you should work um, like there's somebody working 24 hours a day to take it all away from you. So that quote really resonated with me. So um, for me, I, I saw it as it, like with the, uh, how high housing prices are today. Um, I, I didn't mind working hard for three years to get a lifetime of debt freedom. It, it definitely makes sense uh, for me to do that. I mean, now I don't have, like a lot of people, uh, their biggest fear is losing their job and how will they pay the mortgage. But now I don't have that fear. I mean, with globalization, you don't know if you're going to show up for your work next week and then find out that the work is being outsourced to another country with lower wages and you're out of jobs. So I didn't really want to have that fear hanging over my head for the next 25 years, like a lot of people with their mortgages. So that's why I vowed to pay it down as soon as possible. And, and something that was an inspiration for me was my mother, because when the dot-com bubble happened and she almost lost the family house, that kind of uh, always was at the back of my mind. So uh, I didn't want to be in the same situation. So that's why I wanted to burn the mortgage as soon as possible. And so now that the mortgage is paid off, what is different in your life? You're still living in the basement. Are you, you're, you're not working three jobs anymore. You're only working two. Is that the, the big change? Yes, um, no more, uh, no more uh, supermarket job. And so, looking back on it, back to my question about whether you're crazy or not, 
is would you do anything differently then? Because if you're working 100 hours a week, that's pretty much all you have time to do, right? It's kind of hard to go out for a, a drink with the boys or you know have any kind of life. Would you do it differently if, if you uh, were to do it again? That's an excellent question. Uh, I would say that perhaps I would have paid it off in five to six years rather than three years because I would have been able to have a better work-life balance uh, and, and not worked all those crazy hours. But um, then again, I'm able to pretty much enjoy myself now and enjoy mortgage freedom for the rest of my life. So um, as I say, hindsight's twenty twenty. So perhaps if I had uh, taken an extra two to three years to pay it off, I could have enjoyed some of the things that you mentioned, like drinks with the boys or going on a vacation or two. So um, looking back, I guess I have a few regrets, but um, I mean, I'm not really sad about having my mortgage paid off. It's nice not having those mortgage payments coming out of my bank account anymore. So if someone's listening to us today and they're thinking about buying a house, what advice would you give them? Well, I would say definitely make a list of needs and wants of what you're looking for in a house. It's probably not realistic that you'll have um, be able to find everything that you're looking for in a house. So definitely be willing to make compromises because if you're buying in an expensive housing market like Toronto, uh, where the bidding wars are the norm, then you're definitely going to have to be willing to make compromises. Otherwise, you're going to be looking for the next decade for a house and you might be priced out of the market. I would also say um, when it comes to getting a mortgage, uh, just because the bank says that you can get X amount of dollars, for example, $800,000 doesn't mean that you should. Um, the bank is in the business of loaning people money, so you don't want to be stuck with some massive mortgage for the next 20 years hanging over your head, and you don't want to be a slave to your house as well. So um, definitely take a look at what your uh, monthly mortgage payment, or if you're going to pay it weekly, just take a look at how much money will go out a month and see if that's really affordable for you. Because if it means giving up all the things that you love, then um, it might not be worth the sacrifice. And so what advice would you give someone then who already has a house, already has a mortgage, and wants to pay it off faster? You're, it doesn't sound like you're advocating doing what you did and working 100 hours a week what's the middle ground then? What are the, the things people should think about who already have a mortgage, but they'd like to get it paid off quicker? Well, I think goal setting is, is definitely the key. If you don't set yourself a goal, then you're not likely to achieve anything, uh, whether it's paying off your mortgage early or retiring early. So I definitely think that goal setting is the beginning. So I'm a big fan of setting SMART goals, which is a specific, measurable, achievable realistic and uh, time bound. So basically take a look at how soon you'd like to pay off your mortgage and then do the math and see if you're able to do that. So uh, break it down and see how much money a month that you have to go towards your mortgage and um, uh, definitely have a budget because if you don't have a budget, then it's hard to take a look at where, where your money's going each month. So um, basically make yourself a, a game plan and perhaps sit down with a financial planner and and see you know um, see if you can actually a achieve a, a more aggressive goal I mean just because your mortgage amortization is 25 years doesn't mean you have to pay it off in 25 years um, you can perhaps uh, set a goal of paying it off in 15 or, or 20 years and enjoy mortgage freedom that much sooner so you've given us a whole bunch of practical advice but obviously this is a, a 30 minute show we can't go into massive amounts of detail on this have you ever given any thought to taking all of your experiences over the last few years and putting them into a book or something that goes into more detail? Yes, that might have crossed my mind once or twice. And people well, so tell us the scoop then. What? Uh, when's this book coming out? What's happening? Give us the give us the inside story here. Well, I'm, I'm just finishing up the manuscript right now. Um, the working title is "Burn Your Mortgage," and um, rather than have it written like a like a book like the four hour work week, which was a New York Times bestseller. I'm kind of going with the middle ground because my story, some people didn't like the fact that I paid off my mortgage in three years. So I'm kind of going with the middle ground for my story. So it's basically telling my story of paying off my mortgage to help inspire people, but it's also offering practical advice for people in different financial situations. I mean, if you have a family or 
um, somebody is disabled in your household or somebody is sick, it's probably not realistic to pay off your mortgage in five years or three years or, or whatnot. So it's basically to offer people uh, practical financial advice, no matter what situation they're in, they're in. And then they can basically take what information that they like and apply it to their own life and pay off their mortgage uh, sooner at their own pace. So this is a book that we'll perhaps be able to see sometime late in 2016, early 2017, some kind of time frame like that? Yes, I'm aiming to get it published at the end of 2016 in, in time for the holidays because I, I figure with New Year's resolutions coming up, this would definitely be a good book to get people motivated because a lot of people set financial New Year's resolutions to pay off debt. So mortgages uh, is the biggest debt for most people. So I figure, you know, that's perfect timing to get people pumped for the new year. That's great. I'll put a link in the show notes over at hoys.com to your blog and your Twitter account, which is at Sean Cooper Wright. So Sean, S-E-A-N, Cooper, C-O-O-P-E-R, and Wright, as in W-R-I-T-E, at Sean Cooper Wright, as well as to some of the media articles about you and some links to some of your writing so people can follow you and find out when the book is ready. Sean, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, Sean. We'll take a quick break and then be back with more right here on Debt Free and 30. You're listening to Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. Welcome back. It's time for the 30-second recap of what we discussed today. My guest was Sean Cooper, who paid off a $255,000 mortgage in just over three years by working up to 100 hours a week and drastically reducing his living expenses. That's the 30-second recap of what we discussed today. So what's my take on Sean's drastic approach to debt elimination? Well, I think we each have to decide for ourselves what we want. Sean wanted to be mortgage-free as fast as possible to eliminate risk in his life. With no mortgage, he doesn't have to worry about losing his job and not being able to pay the mortgage, so for him, the sacrifice was worth it. But, as Sean said, if he had to do it all over again, he'd probably take a less drastic approach to free up some time for a social life. It's a question of balance, and that's a decision we all have to make for ourselves. That's our show for today. Full show notes are available on our website, including links to Sean's website, some media coverage of his story, and samples of his writing. So please visit our website at hoys.com, that's H-O-Y-E-S dot com, for more information. Thanks for listening. Until next week, I'm Doug Hoys. That was Debt Free in 30. Thanks for listening. That was Debt Free in 30.